Hi, welcome to another Behind the Line with me, Chef Danny Davis. Cuisine, collab and cocktails. We'll be talking to some of the hottest shot chefs around. Hi, Chef Danny Davis here. Another episode of Behind the Line with Chef Danny Davis. We're in Rybovich Marina with uh, yacht chef Jamie Chilly. How are you doing, buddy? Good, mate. How are you? Good How's to things? see you. Very well, mate. Very I haven't good. seen you for ages, man. Yeah, it's been a few months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, good to see you. Yeah. yeah, nice to see you, brother. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with it. So, um, how did you become a chef, Jamie? Um, so, I guess I started off in the whole cliche thing, you know, in the, in the kitchen with my grandma and my mother. Um, my father was quite into like cooking curries on a Friday and a Saturday. And oh yeah, you know, where's that? Like, you from Wales, right? Yeah, mid Wales in the valleys. Yeah, back yeah, in the valleys. Eh? <laughs> um, yeah, so like you know, coming home from school on a Friday was you know, we opened the door to like you know all the spices and chilies and like choking on them. But it sort of developed my palate and interest in uh, of, of cooking from sort of like I would say six or seven. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it sort of, I didn't really have any other wants or directions in my life. I always wanted to be a chef. So. What did you do? Start a restaurant or go to culinary college? Uh, so, both. So I started off pot washing when I was like 14. Um, and then I went to like catering in, in school to go to like GCSE level. Uh, and then went to catering college for three years. But like the last two, two years was sort of uh, full time working and then part time at college as well. So oh, yeah, like seven, an apprenticeship. Yeah, that's it, seven days a week. And, um, Yes, yeah, so that really sort of excelled my career um, sort of a bit quicker than the other students because I, I was having like in, in work experience and uh, I was in a tour at a restaurant um, hotel, which was like quite well was established. Two rosette. Yeah, yeah, so nice. it's, it was great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I started as like commie, like doing everything and, uh, you know, all the, all the picking up herbs and pot washing and just learning the basics of a really good guy. Um, yeah, and then some from there, like, you know, my, my career pro progressed into like different hotels and restaurants, like Michelin star places around the UK. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of, you know, sort of my, my beginning of becoming a chef. Who was like your uh, chef hero? Who, who did you look up to when you were a kid? I think Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, yeah I think Gordon, so. Gordon, he, right? he was, you know, he, even still now, you look what he's achieved and what he's got, his empire and, you know, his... Yeah, he's doing so well. Right? Yeah, exactly. You ever worked at one of his restaurants? Uh, I've not worked in one, but I, I've been there for dinner. And yeah, stuff. I've been to Maze. I did, I did a couple of weeks yeah. at Maze. I went good. to uh, the bread ski, uh, kitchen in Dubai in the, in the Palm. Oh, right. That yeah, was pretty cool. Dubai, right? Yeah, so that, that was a really nice experience. The food's great. So, but it's, yeah, yeah it's he's good. a good guy, isn't he? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, how did you um, how did you get into yachting? So, you you in restaurants? You working in a hotel or a restaurant when you decided to make the jump? Um, it's a funny story actually. Like I, I was I I was working in a a one star that became a two star. Um, and wow, yeah, Gee, it, it, it was well, it was, it was kind of cool. Like, I mean, I mean, the boys are putting all the hours, and the head chef sort of just turned up for service. And you know, the day he got the two star, nobody got a thank you or anything. So, I was just like, you know, this isn't for me. Um, so I put my apron down, I was like, right, I'm gonna go to America, become a lifeguard on a um, summer camp for six months. Yeah, yeah, so I was pretty, in Florida, uh, no, in New, Jer New Jersey, New Jersey, yeah. So, I was there for six months, uh, working at lifeguard, just sitting by the pool all day, like chilling out. Um, you know, so it came towards the end of the summer, I was starting to question what I would do in my life. I knew I didn't want to go back into restaurants. I thought like sort of my whole, my whole aspiration as a young chef was growing up to, to wanting to have the Michelin stars and, and all those. So I, I soon realized it wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, to achieve like two stars and then just be just so disappointed with it because <laughs> yeah. of the way you're treated. Exactly. Totally yeah. understand. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was living in the middle of nowhere. I was on like 10,000 pounds a year um, to, to, to work for this guy for 18 hours a day to get nothing. Um, so yeah, so I was coming towards the end of summer camp and uh, sort of thinking about what I was going to do for my life. I knew, knew I didn't want to go to restaurants, knew I didn't want to go back into hotels. But um, so I called my friend Nathan and I was like, Nathan, what do I do? You know, I need to figure out something. And he said, have you, have you thought about private cooking? And at the stage, I knew nothing about it. And then um, so I looking, looked into it and um, I, I soon found out like you know, going to ski chalets and st was, was the way I wanted to go. So yeah, yeah I applied and uh, within a few days I had a phone call. To come to Austria and that was like my first sort of kind of head chef role but like sort of sole chef in a chalet for like 30 people yeah that's quite popular a lot of people do that right? yeah so what did you do a season a couple of couple yeah of so I did I did uh, no I did a whole season for uh, four months I did uh, two I did sorry two seasons in Saubach in Austria and then I did uh, a season and a half in Val d'Isère in France and let me guess you met a yacht chef that was doing it too right kind of I mean <laughs> I, I'd heard about it but at that point um but then sort of going back even further than that like I, I remember being on holiday with my family on a cruise and we docked into monaco and and like you know you get you get off in monaco it's all these yeah, yachts and, boats, and, yeah. and one day i, I saw I, yeah, yeah exactly so I, I, I saw this chef getting off this yacht and like i was just like i, I didn't know it existed you know and sort of 
it's kind of way how like two stories kind of ended up in the same place and so one of like my bet my proud proud moments of my career so far is that when i was on that holiday um i was about 12 years old we went to the Café de Paris, um, sat down with my parents, had an ice cream, and and uh, I was like, oh, right, okay, next time I come here, I'm gonna be a yacht chef. And then 10 years later, I sat down, Café de Paris, exact same table, exact same ice cream as a yacht chef. Awesome, I want and to achieve that. Yeah, for me, it was <laughs> like, yeah, really, you know, I was a, a, a sole chef on a 50 meter, uh, just temping, but it was, you know, I had made that happen. It made it happen, yeah. Yeah. Um, how you go about organizing yourself, so you get the preference sheets, yeah. For the charter, what do you do? How does it work? Um, yeah, so I'd normally sit down with the captain and the chief stew, um, uh, look over the preference sheets, see what they like, what they don't like, and then come over a menu based on that. Um, and this is what we propose to them on the first day when they arrive on board. Um, and then obviously they get the chance to change it. And hopefully, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you know they're going to yeah, change it. You know, hopefully give me some notice. <laughs> Maybe they don't. Um, yeah, it's All of a sudden they're not gluten free anymore. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, you get vegans that aren't vegan and pescatarians <laughs> are ordering fillet steak and whatever. You know, so. Yeah, that's probably like, you know the, the, how we deal with it. Um, but also, provisioning, what do you do for provisioning? Um, it also depends. Like provisioning depends where we are. I think, um, and then sort of the time scale we have between charters. If it's so, say you're here in Rivervich and you go in next week, what, what would you do? Um, if I have a week, I'll try and to uh, provision here uh, as locally as possible. And supermarkets, yeah, or supermarkets. Use an agent? Yeah, if I mean, obviously, the time scale is a lot less. So we've got 48 hours, and we'll try and use an agent. Mm -hmm. um, just a, obviously a crew of eight. Some needs to be any, any good spots you want to shout out. Um, yeah, Shoreside Support, obviously. Shoreside yeah, Support, yeah. Uh, Tommy, the boys, and the co <laughs> yeah, they've always got me covered, and yeah, great down there, um, mm -hmm. and incredible stuff. Um, Any butchers or, or anything you use when you're when you're just shopping locally? Um, to be honest, I've just found this place called Food Town here. Yeah, um, Food Town, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Up on really 45th. cool stuff. Yeah, so I've been going there for about a week now. And that's all like Asian stuff, Caribbean stuff, everything, literally yeah. everything. They, uh, it's uh, it's probably one of the best live stores. crabs. And, yeah, 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 everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Long scenes, you, you can get uh, like sushi rice. You can get all these frozen fish, halal meats, everything. So it, as a chef, it's really cool. You yeah, know? it's pretty cool. And then you get all like the sort of uncommon Japanese things, like, you know, the, the different flavored misos, mm -hmm. um, different types of nori and all sorts of stuff. It really is a cool, cool supermarket. And so you hold a lot of that kind of stock on the boat as well. Yeah. So you've got, you've got your provisions, you've got everything on board, you're, you're heading off. Um, tell me about your day then. So you start first day of charter, like, what are you doing? What time are you getting up? Um, first day I'm sort of, I'm up, I'm, I'm in the galley by six. Mm -hmm. um, First off, cup of coffee, as I've got to start that way. Um, and then sort of like, you know, I start prepping breakfast and sort of reevaluate the menus, make sure I've got everything going. And, um, and so I wait for the guests to wake up and then I ask the chief stew to present the daily menu to the, to the guests. Yeah, any of those last minute give changes. Give them last minute changes, um, you know, give them a chance to also plan their day if they're going out for dinner or something that they can plan around what I'm doing for food. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then obviously it's, it's, it's looking after the crew. I would do crew breakfast on the on and lunch and dinner on this one. Yeah. Um, so it's you know, looking after the crew as well as looking at guests. So you get hot breakfast every day? Every day, yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's just simple as like pastries and fruits, but then when we do eggs and eggs benedict. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's all depending on how much time I have. If, if the guests are super demanding, uh, you know, the crew sort of suffer, gets, a, bit. suffer a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and they don't get as much, but uh, when, it, when they're a little bit chill, they, you know, I try to look after the crew as much as possible. Um, yeah, then after that, obviously, it's like lunch, uh, crew lunch. If I can, I'll try and take an hour off in the afternoon. We're very rare, you know, you know what it's like. Yeah, you know what it's like. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and there's preparation for dinner, and uh, if I can get any mise en place done for the next day, and then stuff like this. Um, but, and it's my, my, by the time I finish, it can be sort of half 10, 11, it could be two in the morning. Like, it really does change. Um, what, do you, what do you do to uh, to relax then? I have to say the charts dropped off, char drop off day. We all love chop drop off day, right? What's your kind of routine there? You go out and, uh, enjoy uh, yourself or yeah I, li I like to go out and unwind and um i like to book in for a massage get my back clicked uh, yeah 100 percent. i, next... I, I 100 I'd do yeah. that yeah normally a visit to the chiropractor is on is on the order um but yeah i like to hang out with the crew catch up with them because you know, even on a 40 40 meter boat sometimes i go two or three days without seeing them you know like on the night watches and stuff so yeah for sure yeah right? it's, mm. it's good to catch up with them we go for a nice dinner um and then so we reflect on the charter and just let our hair down a bit like go to a pool go to the beach and just really wind down and you know hopefully we've got a bit of time for the next charter or and then you know good to go again yeah. so your boats obviously here in Rybovich going through a refit mm. um what things you're hoping to get uh, in the galley like what, what kind of cool gadgets you want to get put in i always love going down to see aaron in colonial convenience and going there and, yeah he's the guy right? um, he, he's the guy to talk to and he's got all the toys you could ever need um but yeah so obviously like the thermomix is, is quite a big yeah, you like Thermomix? Yeah, I love using that. Yeah, I love my Thermomix. Um, so. Vitamix, we've got water bath, 
Um, we're currently upgrading the ovens, so we've got like the standard melee ovens, but we're upgrading these to combis and self cleaning. And oh yeah, they're nice. Right? Yeah, I had those um, before. we're having like hot lamps and put in the galley. Oh yeah, I mean you don't see that much on boats. No, there, exactly. Yeah. So it's the the so, so we're going for a whole refit now, and, and the galley's been completely redesigned. So we currently have an island in the middle that's been ripped out, and then we're having like a kind of a, a, a peninsula kitchen pass mm -hmm. uh, with storage underneath and it's, it's been completely custom built and, and how much involvement did you have in that uh, a fair bit actually the, the actual design is, is mine oh uh, wow i came up with design so i'm currently working with the owner's reps and and they had their ideas and sort of i said this works better in terms of the dy dynamics and how the galley actually works and yeah so the sort of relationship between the pass and the, and the stove and then the sink and you know how i work in there um yeah it's a great idea to have a pass exactly so it's it's we, we've gained so much space in it and and I'm like, so really looking forward to seeing how the new fit is. We're all stainless steel at the moment, and we go into different colors and different. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, that's um, cool. So you got you got a, a couple of melees in there. You yeah. have a water bath. What kind of water bath is it? Uh, it's like an immersion circulator. I think it's polyscience. Polyscience. Yeah, science, they're yeah. really good, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's great. And I've got the polyscience uh, three thousand vacuum pack machine, which is, is awesome. It's a really good one. Um, yeah, they're the main toys I have. Obviously, a Vitamix. Um, they're probably. Uh, the main things we How about have. technology in the kitchen so i just did a a, a new build uh, enzo yeah and we had um tv screens uh, connected to ipads uh, and so you can put the recipes on there and you put it on the tv screen mm. so you got you got that kind of technology going on what's um, what's going on that's actually cool i've never not heard of that before we we, do, we have a tv screen being put in but it's actually going to have a camera feed from the tables oh, right, um, yeah. so we can monitor the guests and because obviously two different le two different levels so the stewardess keep an eye on when they're finishing and just cuts down on that communication on the radios and sort of that more discreet professional um but yeah there's sort of technology obviously we're, we're upgrading the the radios and, and sort of sort of trying to be that sort of more higher class and so yeah, it's really cool because yeah. it was a, an expedition boat right? yeah and that it's been refitted into luxury yacht yeah exactly yes. but is it ice breaking is it kind of go up to uh, yeah it can go all over the world this boat wow, yeah that's it's really awesome. cool yeah so it's, it's got a cool itinerary we're going over to the med in may um yeah, so really looking forward to having stuff. Over to the Med in May. Yeah. So that leads me on perfectly to traveling. So where have you been? What, what, what's been cool? And, and like, tell me a little bit about where you've traveled. Um, yes, yeah, so during my career, I've been lucky to go to all over the world. You know, uh, Middle East, I spent quite a lot of a few years there, land-based and on yachts. Yeah, um, in Dubai? Yeah, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, I did Oman. Um, and then, you know, from we did sort of Middle Eastern season, go down to the Maldives. And that was really, really epic. Wow, yeah, Maldives yeah. is so beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, it's so untouched. And you know, really, really a special place to see. Um, and then obviously, like over here with Bahamas, done the BVIs, done some of the Caribbean, uh, Florida. You know, it's it's um, yeah. Yeah, and obviously I've done, you know, apart from yachting as well, like, through my ski seasons and chalets, like I've done a lot of the uh, Europe, uh, like Malta and Gozo was like one of my favorite places to go for sure. Yeah. So crew life, Jamie. What's it like working with the crew? Who who is your most important member of the crew? Maybe apart from the captain. Um, probably the stewardesses. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think. Uh, um, so How many stews do you have on this boat? Two. So, two. Uh, quick shout out to Tash and Ariana, the chief Ooh. stew and uh, second stew. Uh, we have a really good relationship, and it's it's so important uh, to have that. Uh, she is uh, Tash is my main communication to the guests in yeah. terms. She's also kind of representing my food and how it's presented on the table and 100%. put down in front of the guests. And then obviously she has to explain the food sometimes as well. So um, it's it's important for me to have that relationship with her. And yeah, we we get on really well inside of work, outside of work. And yeah, she's a great person. She works really hard, um, and it, it's really important because you know, like we're, we're both putting in their work and ultimately working for the same goal. You know, just to give that five star customer experience. Um, you know, that luxury yachting thing. You know, and, and together we work really well. And then the you know second stew as well, Yanni. She's she's incredible. Works really hard. Does all the laundry and it just like helps keep the crew morale up and comes in on the crew food. Yeah, just a have, you got, have you got any tips for um, new chefs coming in how to kind of like cultivate that relationship like build that relationship with the chiefs too yeah i, I think um res like respectfully sort of don't go in with an ego it, it's, it's all about sort of compromise and, and uh, learning to work with different people uh you know you gotta compromise on what your values not sort of values but sort of how you see things and sort of working together i think is is the key thing yeah, yeah. and um, being a yacht chef is is stressful right yeah for sure how do you how do you deal with stress how do you like blow off steam um it's, it's a good question I, I think for me i just try and think things more than once you know yeah yeah just trying to think about what's going on in the situation and like, look at the bigger picture yeah, look at the bigger picture and nine times out of ten the, the stress isn't really anything to do with us it's outside stress you know and then sort of it, again that comes down to the relationship with the stew and and, and the crew um you know it, it's stress can quite easily become overwhelming but if you've got a good crew behind you they've got your back and 
uh, you, you can get through things quite easily, you know, and might say most of the stress is from guests changing their minds or that's you know, true, you know, so it's, it's, it's down then to the crew of being professional and, and, and getting, getting the job done basically. And that's, that's I, I've known you for a while, Jamie, yeah. and, uh, I know that you've, you've completely changed your, uh, your life, your, alf- your outlook on life and the, and the yeah. way you are. Is there anyone in, in yachting that's done that for you? Or is it something that you've taken on yourself? Cause I mean, you were, you were a different person from when I first met you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think a, a number of people, I think, uh, including yourself, Danny, I've known you for many years. I've followed your story and, you know, Andrew Leach, we've, we've, we've built this, uh, you know, this chef circle that, yeah, you like know, strong bond. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes we, you know, we go like a year without seeing each other when we catch up, it's you no, know, it's all food. It's all, it's dinner. It's amazing. Yeah. I miss our cups of tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, I, I think having that circle, uh, you know, outside of work, but kind of in work, if that makes sense. It is quite special and you know you guys influence the menus and it, like sometimes I'll, I'll complain about things and you make me think okay it's really not that much of a big deal and um so yeah i think a lot of people have influenced my career in yachting i would say especially my the, sh- the chef circle that we have you know me you lead you and, and that's through social media yeah 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 let's talk a bit about your social media so sure. you're on instagram yeah. facebook youtube yeah like, you're everywhere right? yeah well yeah mainly mainly instagram I, I did youtube for a while i've got a couple of videos up on there and oh yeah i remember when you did covid yeah. right so you did lockdown videos yeah so i was i was in tenerife as a as a chef for, for a businessman and he had to fly home couldn't fly back so he left me in his apartment for two months so i decided to start up a you know a youtube channel yeah so i did that then and yeah, so sort of, I haven't done it for a while, but you know, it's something I want to kind of plug in again. And, and you've grown that now, haven't you? So you've got your own um, company now? Yeah, so it's sort of, again, COVID uh, came around and we've been in the shipyard and stuff. So um, came up a company uh, called Culinary Genius. Culinary Genius. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, it started as a, as a professional uh, chef store selling chef knives, bamboo steamers. Um, and then and the chef knife rolls, yeah, right? chef knife yeah. rolls, uh, the chef coffee, works. yeah, it, it's it's expanded now into coffee, and we're, we're I'm building a an online supermarket for the UK. Oh wow! And then um, it'd be like a home home uh, kitchen design section in there as well. So it's going to be a complete brand um, based around the culinary uh, genius thing. Um, but yeah, it's going really well. It's sort of a little thing on the side I'm working on. So cool. Thank um, you. One question I ask everybody is. If you could cook for anybody, past still present, alive or dead, who would it be and, and why? Do you know what? I would love to cook for our circle of chefs. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, as well as my parents. I think I think these these guys are... But not at the same time, right? I, probably, I don't know. I mean, because you, you guys and my parents have such an influence on my career and my life and the decisions I make and, and what I think is good food and, and like my influences on food and flavors. And so, I, you know, I probably value your opinions more than I ever would like a lot of other people, you know, because... Oh, wow. You, you guys you know you're in you're in the industry as well and my parents i think it's just i don't get to cook from very often i think it'd be cool for them to see how far i've come on my career and and you know like i was cooking for my dad like curries and stuff that tasted like crap but now <laughs> i could probably take, is, that, is that what you cook you cook curry for them yeah for my dad but uh, but now i could probably do a better one you know so yeah probably you know like the, the chef chef circle and, and my parents probably uh, i'd love love to cook for you guys sometime so awesome sure. so um what what's next for jamie tully what, what are you doing next? You got any plans? Uh, are you staying on the boat you're on? You're looking to move on? Any, yeah. Anything you want to do in the future? Yeah. So uh, I'm, my plan is to stay on this boat. Uh, I, I'm working for a really cool uh, company that's sort of really investing in the crew and the boat and their vision of the future is, is so inspiring and, and, you know, something I really want to be part of. I, I'm very proud to be part of it. Um, so my plan is to stay on there and then on the side also continue developing the Culinary Genius brand, um, which is basically my retirement plan outside of yachting. Yeah. Um, so yeah between those two it keeps me pretty busy so So, do you have any tips for um chefs who are looking to get into yachting like how how do you how do you become a yacht chef the the biggest tip is networking for sure Uh, that that for me is is the social media media, agencies uh, you know talking to people i think that that is the biggest thing uh sorry the first job is the hardest to get and then after that you start networking and you know, like I meet people like you and nature and stuff. So now I'm in a situation where I can, you know, if I if I do need a job, I can pick up the phone to one of you guys and hey, tell me what's going on. Um, yeah, so that's, that's quite a good thing. But it's advice, I, I'd say, you know, be prepared to work hard, be prepared to work hours. You know, don't yeah. come into yachting thinking it's easier than restaurants. Don't think it's, you know, it's it, people. The Instagram is sometimes misleading because they see the the pics of the beach and the, and and the yachts and all that sort of stuff and. That's, that's really such a small side of what we do. You know, we are in the galley six in the morning, 1 a.m. straight through. And we are dealing with last minute requests. 
um, you know, and then we have to we have to be the best at everything, right? You know, if somebody asks for sushi, we have to be all the of a sudden sushi, best yeah. sushi chef. Yeah. They ask for, you know, uh, curry. Now we have to be Indian. Now, if they ask for a souffle, we have to be French. You know, it's um, so your, your repertoire has to be so much bigger than you, in, a, in a restaurant. And you kind of have to be, you know, as good as the master of all things, which is very difficult. Yeah. I kept getting a lot of in, uh, questions on Instagram. How do you do this? How do you do this? Like, what, what, what's the crack? Like, where'd you go? And, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to write a book. <laughs> yeah, so I put it all in a, an ebook, which then became a printable version. Uh, it's on, available on Amazon and it sort of tells you, uh, tells you everything really, what you need, the qualifications, the uh, ENG, SDCW, uh, and then it goes even, for, even further into like dot walking, uh, in places, crew houses, it's all um, interli interlinkable. So you click on the links, it'll take you to the crew houses. Uh, then it goes through pay structures, um, and then the structures of ranks on height on the bigger boats, so you yeah. exec chef, head chef, and, and, and so on. Um, and then there's also like tips in there from other, other chefs, including yourself. And so, they, so bits of advice and Instagram to help people network and find these people that are doing it so they can approach them. And it's, it's supposed to be like the complete package of... Yeah, it's very informative. Right? Thank you very much. And that's yeah. available on Amazon. Yeah. And it's called uh, How to Become a Yacht Chef. How to Become a Yacht Chef. Yeah. Of course. So. That's what it says on the tin. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Jamie, what's your like comfort food? What's your go to food? Um, I love scrambled eggs on toast. Scrambled eggs on yeah. toast? Yeah. Soft scrambled eggs, sourdough toast, uh, creme fraiche, chives, and a bit of truffle oil. If I'm special. Man, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I want to try that next time. Yeah, that's, that's what I go to. Breakfast, really simple. Yeah, it's sort of dinner. I, I, I kind of don't really do dinner. I rush, like, sort of. You know, since I've been training a bit harder now, so mm -hmm. at dinner I kind of just chill salads and chicken and really basic stuff, but comfort food to, to splash out of proper creamy scrambled eggs. And and then since you've been on a charter boat now, um, you start to see uh, different trends in food. Is there any trends that you uh, you think going to happen in the future, or, or things that people, more people are asking for? Yeah, I, I think um, very health conscious now. You see a lot of um, restrictive diets and sort of vegans, pescatarians, new ones coming up every day. Vegan plus. Vegan plus, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's sort of, I think health conscious is going, I think people are a lot, especially wealthy people now are becoming very conscious of what they eat. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think as us private chefs, it's definitely going to impact. What yeah. We a do. lot more plant-based food, yeah, right? Sure. Dropping off the boots and getting yeah, rid of the cars. That's it, yeah. And sort of everything's, you know, everything's organic and high quality anyway, but I think that will even be pushed even higher, you know? And, and, and do you see that with the crew as well? Like the yeah. rest from the crew? Yeah, I think healthier? so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sort of my owner is very, um, very hot on sort of looking after the crew and making sure we get organic vegetables and we're not shopping at rubbish places with the crew either, which is also really nice. So future of yachting, um, I know that the boat you're on is, is very progressive. Do you see the future of yachting changing at all? Yeah, I think so. And I, I really believe COVID has had a positive effect on that uh, in terms of like everyone's realized that crew are important. You know, you can't run the boat without crew. And mm -hmm. um, also through social media and everything, mental health, health has now become such an important thing. And it, it's, it goes hand in hand with yachting. We work long hours, we're away from home, the stress. And so it's, it's inevitable that people, you know, end up with bad mental health. So yeah, get burnout. Exactly. Yeah. Out. And as chefs, like, I've, I've been through a few burnouts myself and it's not a fun thing to go through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, they're currently, I, I see rotation uh, coming up quite often and more regular now and, and sort of uh, a crew being paid a uh, higher salary for what, for what they do. Yeah, and getting paid more money, um, yeah. rotation. Yeah, I think rotation And just addressing is, kind of mental health a bit more, right? Exactly, yeah. And so my, I'm very lucky that my, the, the company I work for are very specific about who, who's going to charter the boat in terms of looking after the crew, making sure the crew aren't working stupid hours and uh, burning out and, and sort of all taking advantage of the crew because of, you know, the hours that are required. Um, which is very lucky, and uh, you know, we're the my owners looking into rotation and looking after looking after the crew, which is a big thing. But I think generally, I think that's going to take over the industry. I think rotation is going to come become a lot more common. Yeah, you start to see it more and more yeah, now. Sure. And, I mean, it was a big thing with the captains and engineers, but you've seen chefs start to get yeah. it now, and, and stewardesses, and yeah, yeah. And I think I think it'll go through the whole ranks. I think even like the lower uh, lower uh, crew members will, will also get rotation. I think it's just as important for everybody to get that work life balance. Yeah, you, know, you, you can only go full out for so long, and then you know you need a break. So, so um, tell me quickly, uh, what's a one of the highlights of your career? What's a standout moment in your career where you were like, "That's really proud of that." Yeah, so there was uh, one dinner in Val uh ski season. Uh, we I was cooking for the executive chef of the Dock and Waffle in London. There was a couple of food, a couple of food magazines, and um, so one day we had a dessert on the table. So instead of putting on a plate, I basically put it up on the table. Oh like, yeah, I've like never seen pictures yeah, of that. Right? Yes, yeah, so it's like a cheesecake in a in a ball 
and then spread out and then it like shattered on the table and, and all the things yeah and then so that, cool. yeah it was awesome and then so i had a write-up in like three or four different magazines i had a like mention from this executive chef of london and it was just epic it was just yeah really highlight of my career and yeah it sort of really uh grew my influence on social media and sort of a really sort of big outbreak for my career yeah so, so if people want to get hold of you find out more about you how, how do they get you uh, easiest way is for Instagram. Instagram. Right. Yeah, Yacht Chef, Jamie Yacht Chef, Chef, Yacht Chef Jamie Tully. And you got a website as well, right? Yeah, I do. I have a built. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, it's just uh, uh, jamietully.com. Jamietully.com. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Yeah. Nice to see you, bro. Nice to see you. Thanks so much. I really appreciate no you guys. And thank you to Trident. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time for more Chefy content on Triton News.